All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the online youth Bible class, uh, week three, day three. Uh, so welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I am praying for you. I'm praying that you are safe, that you're healthy, and, and that God speaks to you through his word. So I'm glad that you're here to read his word with me. Um, tonight is 222, so please make sure that you're there uh, for that, so that you're able to watch that. Make sure you're talking to your leaders about Zoom meetings afterwards so that you guys are able to interact and talk with each other. Um, so yeah, and, and we are also doing uh, the the help your or the love your neighbor egg hunt. Let me turn that off. Uh, the the love your neighbor egg hunt. So if you want eggs, you know, we have the the curbside. If you want to pull up to the church and we can we can give you some eggs during work hours. So so any time any day nine to five, uh, come up here and, and grab some eggs so that you can love on your neighbor. But um, today we're gonna start off with an activity like we kind of have been. Uh, it's a little different. So, I'm going to show you this. This thing's heavy. Bam. All right. You see that? So, this is kind of like a maze, kind of. Uh, we got a, a blue line. We got a red line. And we got a green line. I want you to choose which line you think is going to make it to the end. All right, which one of these three makes it? I'll even show you the end. Oh, I hope that's on there. Yep, there it is. The end. All right. And I'll even... I'll give you, you know, I'm the one that made it, so I guess I'm a professional. Um, <laughs> give you my professional advice. Uh, it was the red line wins. All right. So now we can we can move on. And, what? You actually wanted to see who who made it? I I told you it was red. Uh, you don't trust me? I mean, I can show you, but I expected you guys. I expect you guys to trust me. Uh, but I get that if you want to see it, you can see it. So I, I'll, I'll show you. Ready? All right. Let's see who made I told you. I told you the blue line wins. I don't know why you guys don't trust me. Ready? And boom. See, I didn't lie either time. Right? <laughs> All three of them win. The red line wins and the blue line wins. Right? I, that was kind of silly, and it was kind of a joke. But um, you guys didn't get it because you guys didn't understand it, right? All three of them uh, made it to the end. So uh, the point of that was just to show you, uh, you know, something that you might not understand. Uh, so you didn't trust me because you didn't understand it. So uh, today we're actually going to be reading uh, the story of baby Moses. So if you want to turn to Exodus 2, uh, we're going to start at the very beginning. I'm going to read it. It says, Now a man of the tribe of Levi, married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she gave him, uh, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him, uh, but when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. So, um, in, in Exodus 1, at the very end, it actually said that the Pharaoh uh, gave an order to all the people. And he said that every Hebrew boy uh, that is born must be thrown into the Nile, right? It has to be thrown into the river. Uh, but you can let every girl live. So, so he was really saying that every Hebrew boy uh, has to be killed. Right? There can be no more Hebrew boys. He was trying to kind of cut off the Hebrews and, and not have more, right? If you don't have boys and girls, you're not going to continue to make more and more Hebrews. So he was trying to, to cut them off. So, um, verse 4 then says, uh, his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Right? His, the baby's older sister stood at a distance to see uh, what would happen after he was placed in the river. Uh, then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. Uh, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. Now, this is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister, right, the baby sister, um, asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. So, right, we have a, 
the king said, no more, no more Hebrew babies. Uh, and then uh, this woman, this Levi woman gave birth, or, or no more baby boys, sorry. She gave birth to a, and then this Levi woman gave birth uh, to a baby boy. And as she saw that he was a fine child, she was like, I, I don't want to kill him, right? That would be hard. Now, you know, I don't want to kill him. So uh, she tried to hide him for three months, uh, but she couldn't hide him anymore, right? Babies aren't quiet. <laughs> so uh, then she, she made a basket that would float, and she put him in a basket, and she put him along, among the reeds, right? So he probably wouldn't float away. And uh, she put him there in the river. And then the Pharaoh's daughter uh, came out down to take a bath, and she found the baby. And at that point, the, the baby sister was kind of stalking the basket out, like watching it. And she's like, you want me to go get somebody, one of the Hebrew women, to take care of it? And she said yes. So the baby's mother got to come and take care of it. She even got paid to take care of her own child. So um, it's an amazing story, right? And what I want us to catch here is um, it would have been hard for her to have a baby boy at this time. right? Imagine hearing that you cannot have a baby boy. You've already had a girl. And now you can't have a baby boy. You have a you have a baby boy, right? That would be hard. It'd be hard to be like God. What are you? These are Hebrew women. So it'd be hard to be like God. Why did you give me a baby boy? Why is this happening? I'm not. I'm not supposed to keep him. I'm supposed to kill him now, right? You don't understand. Uh, you know, it's it's hard for her to understand. What, it would be hard for her to understand uh, what God's doing, right? What's going on. Uh, in the end, God gave her away, right? God had a plan for Moses the whole time. Uh, so he gave her away, uh, uh, an option. And she, she put him in the river, and, and now God worked it out to where she can raise uh, her own child without having to hide him. I mean, she even got paid for it. Uh, but, but God had a plan for Moses the whole time, even though she uh, probably didn't understand that was a plan. That Pharaoh's daughter was going to come down and take it, and she was going to have me, and I was even going to be paid to do it, right? Like, that's crazy. Uh, I'm sure she didn't know God's full plan, but uh, she would, God did have a plan, right? And that's what I wanted to catch, right? I wanted to go over this, and I wanted to do that, uh, because maybe it's, it's hard for you right now, right? With everything that's going on, maybe it is hard for you right now uh, to trust God, right? To understand what's going on. Uh, with everything, I don't know what that is. Uh, there's like a, something floating around. Uh, maybe it's hard for you to understand what's going on or, or even to trust God uh, with everything that's going on. But what I don't want us to get confused is, is the difference, right? We are uh, uh, following Jesus uh, is more about trusting him than it is understanding him, right? It is a whole lot more about trusting him than understanding him, right? This coronavirus can be confusing, right? You go, What's happening right now, right? What is going on, right? What is going to happen after this? What's going to happen in the next couple of weeks? What's going to happen after this is over? Or, or you know, what am I supposed to do with all this? What am I, yeah. I mean, it can be confusing. And um, I, I just want us to know that trusting God and trusting that he has a plan for this, right? God had a plan for Moses, even if she didn't realize it. And God has a plan for this, even if we don't realize it and we don't understand it. Um, and that trusting him and trusting that he has a plan is more important than understanding the plan. Right. Trusting the Lord while you don't understand is faith. <laughs> right. That is having a faith. So now I want you to turn to Second Chronicles 20. Second, it's actually Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. So 2020 I think is perfect. But uh, it says this, it says, Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Josephat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. Right? Have faith. <laughs> Have faith. Faith in the Lord, have faith in his people, and trust that the Lord is working everything out. That we serve a God who is in control of all. Right? He, nothing goes on without God okaying it. Uh, so I want us to be able to trust in that. Right? I want us to be able to trust, uh, uh, like hopefully uh, Moses' mom did, that, that I'm putting this baby in here and the Lord has a plan for him. Right? We, it it, it might have been hard for you to trust me when I told you it was red. But it was red, right? There was a there was something going on that you didn't understand, that all of them made it to the end. And, and I want us to be able to, to have faith in the Lord, right? It says, 
it says, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. Right? God has a plan for us to prosper us. And I want us to have faith in that, that God has a plan uh, over everything. We need to be able to trust him even if we can't understand everything that's going on right now. Right? So, sorry. So the way that we can that we can try to work for this it, through this it, is let's read his word right let's pray let's spend time with God and right let's see if we get maybe see if you can even find a reason that you shouldn't trust God right because you're like yeah I mean sometimes it's hard to trust God why <laughs> has God ever given us a reason to not trust him right because God works everything out in the end for his good. I'm sure it was hard for her to put her baby into the river. And she's like, Lord, this is crazy. Uh, but in the end, he had a plan. And I want us to maybe spend time with God and his word and pray into him in 222 tonight. And, and, and just find a way to be able to trust him. Because it says, um, go back to it, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. God has a plan for you. Just like he had a plan for Moses, a plan to prosper you. And I want us to, to just try to be able to trust him. Right? A lot of times we want to trust in ourselves because we can see ourselves. We can understand ourselves. Uh, we don't always see God, but, but we can always trust in God. And I just want us to think about that. Spend some time with him and see if we are able uh, to trust in him. So... Uh, that is it for today. I made it a little short so you guys can go watch the 222 video. So you got no excuse. Uh, be there. Uh, watch it and be in contact with your leaders. I love you guys. And uh, let's pray together. So, Lord, I thank you so much for all of these, uh, everybody watching it, and especially the youth, Lord. I pray that they would be able to, to put their faith and their trust in you and not in themselves, not in the things of this world. Lord, I pray that you would make your presence known in their lives. Uh, Lord, I just pray that, that you are glorified in everything that's going on today. And, and I pray that, that your plan and your will would be known to all of us. So, Lord, I pray that you are keeping all of them safe, their families safe, all of them healthy, and, and that they are able to, to still interact with each other and, and hear and interact with your people. So, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, go watch 222. I love you guys, and I will see you soon. Bye.